We'll call the meeting to order. Roll call. Okay, Mayor Westergaard. Yes. Moeller. Yes. Towns. Yes. Boltman. Yep. Reese. Yes. We have no one for public forum. Consent agenda. Any additions or corrections? That'd be. Yeah, we would like to amend the consent agenda to include that one additional uh, building permit for Jim and Lisa Garls. They'll be tearing down their, their cabin out there at 309 Lake Lake and New construction of a, of a new home out there. I'll second it. Roll call. Waltman. Yep. Moeller. Yes. Boltman. Yep. Toms. Yes. Reese. Yes. Okay, we're going to talk about the High Street Alley Railroad right away. So we wanted to talk with the council tonight about how we would proceed to dispose of that property. Have you all take a look at page four again? That's that the plat of what was proposed then. So this would would include all of that the alley to the east of of the lots, and then also some of that railroad right away. So what that does is has has the city retain 20 feet on top of the ridge out there so it's, there's 20 feet where the city could still utilize for snowmobile trail or to other types of trail at some point um, so that uh, that is still retained there and then there's these parcels a through g a through f are just adjacent to the to the east or the back side of these of these lots and then parcel g is an existing alley uh, down there on the south part of where we're talking about so the, just the notion, though, would be I, I need to discuss with the council about how you would proceed with the <coughs> disposal of the lands. The city can't give land. The city needs to, needs to sell land for fair market value, and then it becomes a question of determining that value. So I'll throw out a couple of options then to you. Option number one would be that you can always determine value by having a, uh, a bid process and that we could certainly take sealed bids on that if you'd like you know i'd suggest if you take sealed bids you're still setting a minimum price on that because there are certain expenses that we would still want to recoup but if you take sealed bids uh, that's one way to establish fair market value now from the neighbor's point point of view that also then means anybody could come in and, and potentially bid on that property um, so i guess that's uh uh, option number one. The option number two that we could discuss is, is to somehow other otherwise determine fair market value of that. So I, I'd suggest that we could seek a uh, a realtor's opinion of value. And I, I talked with the, with uh, Gary Wicker today about that he was back in town, and then he suggested that he could work with uh, with Court Stargell and the two of them together could come up with a, a realtor's opinion of value. And if you do that, we come up with an opinion of value, and then the uh, it would just be offered for, for sale. You just offer it to the neighbors <coughs> at that predetermined price. And what if one or more of the neighbors don't want to participate? Yeah, it makes for a um, kind of a... I'll probably mess back there <laughs> if, if they would choose not to. You know, so we had all of the neighbors petition the city to undertake this. Okay, but that doesn't, I don't know that that means that all of them are going to want to purchase the land. So at the prior meeting when they were here, they weren't told that they were going to need to purchase, right? Oh, I don't know. I, what say you, the neighbors? It was an option. It was an option. Uh, the alley, Jim. Oh, no, I ain't talking about property. I'm talking about the alley. That's all I'm considering. That you're going to close completely? That would be the proposal is to close the then alley. Then you're going to cut off access to my property. But the council can opt out and leave that alley alone and still do the rest. That's an option the council has. Is that, is that this piece right here? Hmm. Yeah, this, G. this is partial G. That, uh, See what you're talking about here? Yeah, <coughs> that's this piece right here. 
Yeah, we can leave that alone. Yeah. 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 Right here? Right. Here. right. Yeah. Yeah, we can leave that alone. So I guess that, which part know, is that? There, I'll show it to you. When I when I discussed the plat with the surveyor, you know, that was done intentionally to separate that out and have that identified as a separate parcel. That's all. So that even if you would choose to uh, vacate the remainder of the alley from there on north. It still is an option this. then that you keep yeah, that. And what I want is my driveway. And that's so the, I could fix it. That's well, that that's this it. area that we're talking about <laughs> from Jim. Oh, the city. That's the part I would like to have so I could fix it and not have the bumps and the other stuff coming in. Oh well, we, we have that option. The you part he wants to not sell right. is my Here. driveway. Or is the drive into my yard, that's and that's the part I would. I don't care about the rest of it personally. <laughs> it's a mess, and I'm not going to fix it if I don't own it. Well, if it's an alley, we have to fix it, right? Well, we fix it like we've done in the past, probably. Nothing. Say we. <laughs> nothing in 30 <laughs> years. We have done nothing. Not done nothing. I, don't, I don't think we're interested in. I just think we'll just leave it alone while Anna or do the rest. Just leave the alley the way it is. If there's it's no an alley that the city owns, aren't we responsible to fix it? Just like any other alley in town. Only, you know, just only to a... See, um, what's a happened there standard. is somebody has concreted it up down past her, you know, not her garage. And the part beyond that is grass. Nobody really drives on it. The city doesn't use it. Well, it hasn't. City is that we've owned this place for thirty years, and I can, as far as I know, there's never been a city vehicle to go down it. So the alley is parcel G. Right. Now, part of it. And isn't there an alley back behind all of this? There is. So if if you look, even up on parcel A, that you see on the north side, north, in the left corner of that, where it says twenty feet. Yeah, in parcel. I see that. Okay, and that's marked. That 20 feet fix it, is the alley. Okay. So the alley abuts their property, and then the railroad property is on the other side that's of that, correct. to the east. Yeah, yeah. So all this down through here is alley. Yes. The only thing I don't want is I don't want access to my, because I got quite a little property back there. And we was considering building a garage back there. But back to drive there. across my other property. So are you parcel one? Jim He's one. one. Jim is yep. one. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so if you vacate the whole alley, how is it split up? If you vacate it, it's half to each of property line. Ten feet. Each. Okay. That's what you don't want. That's what's going to happen. What? Half of the alley is mine, half is yours. At least then I can go ahead and add on some to my side of it and have a driveway. Go for it. <laughs> well, if you try parking on that, never mind. We have to decide if we're going to sell it or market value offer to the Yes. Yeah, you know, I guess the uh, that would be the decision. Yes, yeah, how you would determine value. Or well, we don't have to do anything. Or you, yeah, I mean, you sure don't have to. You don't have to do anything. We can just have status quo. So. Except for the requested to do it. Well, so now that this is all like a big can of worms, <laughs> now what? Yeah, you your guys do you position. still want to do it if you have the change? If, if it is that you might have to buy it. Here's one of the things that I want to ask you is an alley. Isn't that just property that the city has acquired through easement? Through, through public dedication, yeah. Yep. And then you're going to sell it back to us? 
there are there's processes in place for that to happen. Yeah. To sell it back to you, actually, we're kind of splitting hairs on this, Jim. But here, here's what's going to happen. Okay. If we would sell the property, we are selling that railroad property to the east. Okay. So, in this description for the council, what you'd see is we would sell parcel A less the west 20 feet. Okay. So we're not selling the alley. You'd sell parcel A less the uh, west 20 feet, then supposedly the same owner owns parcel A and number 7. They would own on both sides, you vacate the alley, they get both sides of it that way. Okay. So in other words, the property goes all the way from the east of their lot all the way back now. It would go all the way back now. To the part that we're keeping. To the part that and we're keeping. And everything yeah. in there is yours. Yeah. Is that what you guys thought was going to happen? You just thought you wouldn't have to buy it. We did. We didn't know what the procedure was. We asked for for that, but we also knew that there was a chance that we would have to pay something as far as like transfer of property, transfer and, and survey fees and stuff. Which I've talked to the other landowners and there's been only one that said that she probably or he I'm not saying who it is but they may not but they've already said that if you do a fair market value the one of us can acquire it and at a later date when they choose to maybe want that then we would turn around and deed it to them and they would pay us so that way we would still retain all that back there without somebody from Joe Blow down the street or cross. someone else coming in and exactly. the property that's behind And them. honestly, who's going to want that other than us homeowners? Why would anybody want to buy back there? What, what are they going to do with it? I agree. And to me, fair market value, you take into account $1,600, I think, for survey fees? Yes. Okay. So then you take that plus whatever the land is worth. As far as the land value for the city, it isn't a lot because you haven't done anything with it in eons. You know, it's never been a productive piece of land that the city has utilized. So therefore, what is fair market value? Well, that'd be interesting to know before we make it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that that's the thing. You know. I would say the safest way to do that is to let the two realtors decide what it is. If it's just us recouping our costs for this, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And that's... I mean, it's not even that. I don't know. Well, and oh. the thing is, I mean, when you open it up for bids... You may not get you may, $1,600 back. You, that's right. You may only <clears throat> get, hey, I'm going to go to bid 10, but ten, some guy comes in and says, seven lots. I'll bid $70. Well, we, we can we we them them them. We'll But what I'm saying is, yeah. you, it, you, still, you may not ever acquire the amount that you would get if you went fair market and allowed the homeowner to purchase that piece of land. You know, I'm, I'll tell you what my recommendation to the council would be on if we wanted to bid it. And the recommendation would be to, to bid it in minimum would be $500 per parcel. And I don't have a problem with that at all. I don't. Per parcel. <laughs> It'd be minimum bid. So that will basically allow us to recoup costs. By the time we're done with Dave and and some recording fees walking. and everything goes along with it. Well, I'm not letting you. Well, I'm not going to. <laughs> I damn sure don't want it. But that's what I'm saying. And I, and I know, and I, I will tell you right up front, the person that said that they didn't think that they would couldn't afford it or didn't want it, he and I will buy their piece. So that piece will be bought. And so, if everybody decides to back out, he and I will buy the whole kit and caboodle through there. So did the city have to buy So it really? either way, you're going to recoup at least $1,600 right there <laughs> if you do fair market. So did the railroad uh, just give the property it's to the city yeah. it's and to start you can acquire that through an And had that, had that alley not been there, it would have went back it to It would have came back to us homeowners. 
um, but because when the railroad the, went out. Because the alley is there, the owner of the property at that time was the city of Lakeview. So therefore, the land that was the railroad went to the city. Otherwise, if that hadn't have been there, us homeowners would have had it. Well, so then, how does that work? Because I thought that I thought that Lakeview and 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 Lakeview on south kept the right of way, and on north they did not keep the right of way. They let it go back to the farmers. So how did that work? Um, you mean in town, Mickey, or north? Well, even yeah, out of, all over where you've got railroad property. The whole sock trail and going to Sac City. I thought that did, how did the how did they get all of the land from the farmers? Because I thought that normally it goes back to the adjacent land owner. Yeah. But I don't think. But it didn't all. It did. Yeah. I tell you, the we National Heritage Foundation or something like that is that how it's done? Yeah. Well, it, oh, excuse me. What happened was uh, about at the last minute, uh, National Heritage Foundation, some other organizations like that came in and lobbied for a law that said uh, they wanted to maintain these abandoned railroad right of ways for trails, which is why you have a sock rail trail that happened there. Some municipality or some organization <coughs> took title to it, a non-taxable. So it must have been like the, the city of Lakeview and then the county. Yeah, but the county did not go north <coughs> and keep it. it was, well, they probably deeded it over to the farmers. I, 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 the, I they know probably they did. did a quick clean. I deed. know they did, but they didn't do it going to Carroll. I think at the yeah. time there was something like the Iowa Heritage Foundation, or there was some organization right. set up to acquire title. You're right. There was. There was, Vicki. And I do remember that. And that was before we moved here, but we had it in the previous place where we lived. And it was to build bicycle trails and that type of thing. And there was a program out there for that type of thing. And, the big fight at the time when I was county attorney was the farmers were coming in and saying, don't you dare put a rail trail down the middle of my field. Mm -hmm. That's what was happening. I remember there was a battle on quite a bit. Otherwise, it would go all the way up to the Storm Lake and north, you know. Right, right. See, in ours, on the back side of our farm that time, it cost like an eighth of a mile, cost 300 bucks. It was a, like a quarter mile. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, the other guy and I had to split that. So the... The east side of it cost me three hundred dollars, and cost him three hundred dollars. Right. But I ended up selling it to him because what was I going to do with that eighth mile? <laughs> you know. So I just sold it to him for three hundred bucks, right. and was done with it. Right. So the recommendation before the council is to um, put it out for bids. No, well, no, not necessarily. It's a decision for the council. You know, because um, I have talked with with uh, with Gary and and uh, Ketteris. And they are willing to give a broker's opinion, and that could be a, uh, a way to go. We'll wait till next meeting and find out what that's going to cost. Wouldn't that be a better thing so everybody knows where we're at? I yeah, think I so. Really think so. I think we, we need to know where we're at. We don't know what we're doing. Because maybe, maybe it's... Uh, <coughs> uh, Scott and I have talked about, too, the city does have to reserve some easement to get back to those existing facility plants that are, that are back there, whatever they are. Uh, power stations or phone stations or whatever they are back there. And you do have it because I, after this whole muddled up mess came about, I went to the bank last Friday and got my deed and abstract out of the lockbox. The city has an easement. And it's right in my deed and mm -hmm. abstract. The city has, of Lakeview has an easement. On your property? Yes. Okay. To get through there. It's in my deed. I didn't bring the abstract tonight. I should have, but it which, is in there. Which lot are you? Number four. Fourth one from the north. <clears throat> well, if everybody's all right, we'll go to the next meeting. We'll have the prices from our realtors. Anybody's going to know where we're at instead of throwing this in the dark. So if landowners are okay with that, that's what we'll do. I am. And I, and I speak for the others. I think we were all pretty caught up in it at the point when we thought, oh my God, we opened up a can of worms and now somebody could come in here and buy this land out from under us and that wasn't our intentions. You know, the homeowners have spent 30 plus years there or longer. We've maintained that. We've taken care of it for the city and a stranger's going to come in and yank it out from underneath us. So, yeah. Well, we won't do anything until we get a price. Everybody knows. Good. Yeah, that's a favorite <coughs> for sure. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you come next council meeting. And it yes. is two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. First it's Monday of November. November. It's going to be the first. Okay. Thank you. Well, will you have any information that say in a couple of weeks we can come down and find out where you're at with it? Well, just that it would be the, the value that the uh, realtors would assign it. So hopefully we'll see if that's, uh, see how quickly we can get that information. Is that what you want to know, Jim? Are they going to get a commission out of it? <laughs> <laughs> Very few people do stuff for the city for yeah, free. For free. That's right. They do? <laughs> no, they don't. No, they don't. Very few do. Very few. Okay. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Eric, you want to give us a little report on the splash pad? But you did a wonderful job keeping the going running. Yes. Yes. Hats off. Yes. To you. So so you awesome. some, some good things and some not so great things. The not, not so great things happened at the beginning and they kind of solved themselves because I was not a happy person. I'm sure Scott can attest to that. Because <laughs> uh, I was over there a lot, even uh, Mike Peterson came over one day and said, How can you go over here so darn much? You know, but, but that all faded. But in order to make it a more pleasant place and safer place, I think we need to definitely try to get that tree trim back. And that's a pretty tall um, hackberry tree. And also to put that those cement pavers around the edge of that on the north side and the east side, on the west side. But there's always a water hole there because see those kids will cover up part of the cannon so it shoots farther than what you have it set, and they'll they'll stand on some of those jets and then other stuff will shoot farther than it's set. So there's always water going all around there in the grass. You know, it's just a mud hole and there's a big wasp um, issue of that north north wet spot there is lots there off and on all summer go over there and spray it and kill them and then they come back you know so i would just like to see and also in the issue with the with the dirt soil i'm still concerned about the dirt under that side because even though we had heavy rain and then a pause and heavy rain and a pause over the summer if we didn't go back and water it after about three or four days it was turned brown so i don't know if the if the soil's like the report said, it's got a chemical in it, or if it's just so compacted in there that hopefully this really wet period now, plus the freezing thaw of the winter, should open up that so that the, the roots from the side will go into the ground. But there are areas of the side that just turn brown as soon as it quit raining. So you're hoping that's going to resolve itself, but we're not sure. Right, right. But, but I don't, like I say, the soil the city has, it was either from the backhoe and or the bread spoil. And it's just... Not the best it's soil. It's not good stuff, yeah. you know. You know? <laughs> and I know that Brendan Reverend bought dirt from Worches and his yard looks great, you know. So that's pretty good dirt. And I've already contacted Worches about, well, getting dirt for the park, for the campground. But for uh, a 16 load ton, 16 ton load of dirt, it would cost $260 to deliver it to Lakeview. So you want to do that yet this fall? Well, it'd be better to do it in the fall. Mm -hmm. All right. Weather permitting, you know. Get the grass planted. Yeah, at least seed it down in there. Yeah. And what? So what are you talking about? Where are you talking about replanting? Well, around the the squirrel cage down there, where, where the okay, that that's still a lot higher than the surrounding area. And all around the splash pad, there's certain places where the, you know, the, the dirt is level with the splash pad, and there's places where the dirt is four inches lower than the splash pad, you know. And uh, I like to have it all level along the edge so that it's easier to mow and maintain. Plus, like say, when the mower goes through there, even spots that aren't wet all the time, there's still gouges and or, you know, uh, cuts the sod and stuff. So I'd like to have it more level around there. And there's a few places along the sidewalk that go towards the playground side that need to have some more dirt level up in there also. So what can we do about the bikes going through there? Can we put yeah. something up on the ends so they can't get through? I don't, I don't think you can do anything. I don't, I don't think we need a golf cart on there though. Hmm? Well, no, but I don't know. But you know, rice, you know some people rice. put bolsters, you know, in, in the in the pavement, but that's not going to stop. Nothing will stop a bicycle they want to go up there. Mm -hmm. uh, it might stop a, a, a golf cart. But the golf carts were just a few, but the bicycles are all the time. All the time. I mean, all the time. Mm -hmm. They're on there all the time. If we put a sign up, no bikes on the... There, there, are, there is. You know, I mean, that's what the 
the panel has that on there, no bicycle. <clears throat> I don't know if you would put like a, a, a tag on the cement itself on the sidewalk, you know, no wheels or whatever except for strollers or something, but, but uh, you know, I, I, on it. I spoke to a few people that did that, you know, and, and uh, what's the big whoop, you know. You know um, <laughs> But, uh, but otherwise, there was only one incidence of, of, of people getting really carried away out there. I did stop and harangue pretty hard. Three juveniles that were on a rollerblades, on a skateboard, on a bicycle, running around down there and running over the button continually, you know. So I did get those kids off of there. But, you know, the adults, I mean, they just, they just, it's just kind of a normal activity, I guess, you know. They don't seem like they're ashamed that they're doing it or whatever. They just ride across it. You know, even if there's kids on there, they'll you know they'll stop and walk across it, you know, or whatever. But uh, I've seen people ride across it when there's kids on the on the place field, on the cement. I didn't know you could you know. even take the golf cart down like around the lake there, can you? Oh, you can in, no. in town. You can. I never. I mean, we never but, do, but you know, just not. You know, it's not supposed to be off the street. That's what I thought. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So what are you saying? Do you think to, to put a, an imprint on the sidewalk itself, no bicycles, no bikes? It might stop a few people, you know, but... Uh, it might stop more than you think. Some it people might, probably yeah. don't even yeah. think it's... <coughs> we have it down there more towards the street edge than up there. An with issue, because yeah, bikes get on people sidewalks. People don't need that sign. Yeah, do whatever. Virtually minimal cost for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then you also want the dirt. Yeah, I'd like to get some real dirt. <laughs> And then we better get the dirt. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Do it this fall because spring plowing never works. Yeah. yeah. We'll fight it all next summer if we don't get it now. Mm -hmm. We want you to come back. got the same dirt where you took out my tree. Yeah. And nothing grows. <laughs> so, I think that's probably true. It's the whole pile. They, they have yeah. yeah. holes. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that I planted that two or three times. I can't get it. Nothing to grow there. So, is that all the stuff, Bill, that came from that? When they were doing the bridge out there? That was the good dirt stuff. Oh, that was good stuff. Okay. This side think came from Evapco. Yeah, this is Evapco dirt is left. I think yeah, most of the dredge soil was already gone too. That was pretty good. Was gone. Yeah. yeah, this Evapco stuff is just... You, can, you can't get nothing to grow but weeds. Yeah, that's just... Well, it's a very good park. We don't want to shortchange it just for a little dirt. Yeah. No. We want to do it right. We appreciate what you're yeah. doing. Okay. So, I'll make a motion for Scott and Eric to go ahead and purchase the... Required improvements to the splash pad, and I'll second it. Roll call. Don? Yes. Mulder? Yes. Reese? Yes. Fulton? Yep. Eric, thanks for everything you did. I know there was days yeah, you weren't very you. tickled. Yeah, that kind of solved itself. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> we appreciate I, it. I was mostly worried that I was not doing what I was, you know, supposed to be doing for a while there. And even Ruth was saying, where are you man? You know. <laughs> It was a very good attraction for the city for that splash you know, it really yeah. was. Um, yeah, it was, it was very busy. It was very popular. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah. Okay, 1848 is our 408 property downtown. We, yeah, this is uh, really a, a, uh, a procedural issue. We need to actually have a the city council pass this resolution saying that you would formally accept the acquisition of that, of that property. So, second? Not second. Roll call. Walton? Yeah. Peace? Yes. Mulder? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Well, we have had several people look at it. Yeah, I guess just a lo little update on that. Uh, I've uh, had four, four uh, folks really go through and and take a look at it, and uh, you know there was a lot of a lot of interest at least in it, and I would fully expect we'll get a couple proposals. So uh, everybody you think is aware that they have the proposal in by the so it's twenty second. Twenty second, yeah, yeah. So you know we talked about that at the last at our meeting last uh, Monday, and then by Tuesday, you know everything that went to the paper. We sent out an email blast with all of that information on it and then put it on Facebook. And actually, I heard from at least two of the folks that they saw it on Facebook. So that was uh, uh, real positive. And that kind of laid out the requirements of, of the proposal. So they got to give us a proposal that says 
what their proposed uses would be, the type of renovation that they would propose, to the extent that they would be renovating the building, the timeline for their renovation, and then the price that they would propose to pay. So they'll give us the, these proposals based upon those four things, and then it would be up to the City Council to choose which proposal you would, would want to work with, even if it's not the highest bidder. Um, I did have one person uh, question whether this was something that the city could do in closed session because they had a, uh, a they basically would like it to remain as, uh, as confidential as possible for as long as possible, which it can then. I was checking with Dave that, uh, that we can consider uh, property uh, transactions in closed session. So we'll plan on that for the city council meeting, which would be next Tuesday the 23rd that we'll meet to consider these proposals okay now on the 22nd which would be next Monday is that school board meeting and then we will discuss here a little bit about how we're going to do that school board but uh, some positive things are are so going on with that 408 main so hopefully there's some interest so will there be a minimum bid or not there is there no minimum bid hmm. So, we, I mean, we should be able to eat up our costs, man. I don't even know if I could say that, Jerry. You, know, you, you may get a bid that says, I would propose to do, to do this, and I'll make these improvements, and, and uh, I'll do it in this time frame, but my purchase price would be zero. Hmm. You know, so you need That's to know how you, how you would... Handle that. Well, yeah, but you got to look at the big picture there. Not obviously, that's not what we want to happen. But you are going to have something come in and be a higher evaluation on taxes, and it's going to be, you know, hopefully there's a retail, and you're going to have sales tax coming in and and lost, and so I mean, you just got to look at it all. Right. Yeah. Depends on what they're going to do with it. As long as we don't have to tear it down, it's a good thing. Well, I I have never bought nothing for that. Here's your opportunity. <laughs> I don't want it. Well, just say. And if you get too many buyers, send them across the street. I know, but it's going to cost. <laughs> it's going to cost us money to tear it down. Terry, you do know that. It's going to cost care. us money to tear I mean, it down. Let it get tore down. It don't matter to me. Yeah, I'm in. We just sell it for nothing, we just won't tear it down. So you'll spend twenty five thousand dollars more. Well, whatever. At least it's You'd rather home. spend twenty five thousand dollars more than have it be a taxable income coming in? Nothing for nothing don't sound good to me, I'll tell you that. Whatever. That ain't happened yet, so let's see what we get. Okay, let's approve the pay estimate number three for Brendan Hicks. We're still fighting the money. They are Plugging away through the mud. Oh. Second. Second. Roll call. Oh. Yes. Hold on. Yes. Tom. Yes. Yeah. Oh, our third street curb and gutter. Yeah. So this is about that area down by the uh, Morris Truck Shed on Third Street that has right at that entrance there is some pretty severe cracking going on. I talked with Lon about developing a, a different project there, and this would uh, have us then remove that existing curb and gutter, which is six inches thick, and you replace that with curb and gutter, it's ten inches thick, but then also we would propose to add a, a larger apron, an eight foot wide apron um, inside that, and that also would be ten inches thick, so you have one larger area where the trucks are turning in there and it'd be it'd be thick concrete price for lawn that he uh, he had given us was seven thousand nine hundred sixty five dollars um, I guess I'd tell you that does not include any allowance for the the curb and gutter that was that is cracked you know the response was you know I, put, I did put it in according to the project spec which is true put it in according to the project spec just uh, you know, the spec, I would certainly say is not was insufficient, but he did put it in accordingly. Who did the spec? He did. Lon well, did oh. the specs. Lon, Lon and I did the specs. Yeah. 
Bill, you just didn't let it go until it busts the way up. Then we can fix it later. I, uh, Bob and Joyce Moore talked to me, and also their son Nate talked to me yesterday. And they would just soon leave it the way it is without any inter interruptions, is what they would they asked me for. But it's not causing any problems right now? No. Let it go for a while. I think so, Mike. Yeah. If, if, they, if they're not wanting something, yeah, they've all, three, all three talked to me. If they're happy, then we're happy. Yeah. Don't worry about it later. City Administrator Report. All right. That 2017 street project, and I would call your attention to this other report that was, mm -hmm. was with your packet. And there's, of course, lots of technical stuff in here, but I want to get to page. There's the one with the three on the top, evaluations and recommendations in the middle of that page. <coughs> Where this uh, tells you a little bit about the, the findings from their, from their test borings in the moisture content that varied and, and such and such and such. But then it says, it is CT, it's CTS's opinion that the fill material was not placed in a uniform manner and is most likely the cause of pavement distress. So that sentence... Is, doesn't that mean that Caliber didn't do it right? That's what it meant <laughs> yeah, to me when Caliber I... Caliber is hanging, okay, it seems to be hanging their hat on that sentence. And we gave, sent this off to our, our engineer who said, yeah, that just proved our point that the that it, the subgrade wasn't properly prepared. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'm sure it, it, it kind of defaults back to a, a legal issue. And so where are we at then, Dave? Well, the first thing uh, is what what does the council want to do over the winter? I think there's a proposal that they uh, route yeah that they would route and seal these cracks and, and leave it until spring. Which probably make some sense with the weather that we're having right now. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we can start deciding what that report actually means because I read it the same way as you did, Vicki. And, and like, wow. then I saw their letter that, in which they said, see, that supports their position. I'm like, well, somebody's really off here then. So, But if we spend this money to seal it, and there's, I mean, they seem to all be in agreement that there's going to be a lot more cracks by spring. I think they got picked by the ceiling. Well, they're going to turn it down as, as a claim, just like they did on, on the uh, oh. boring. They, they turned that in as a claim. That doesn't mean we have to pay it, but they, they're submitting it as a claim to be determined, either by agreement or by arbitration or by litigation. So I just, why, do we want to, why do we want to fix it, though, if we're going to turn it up this way? Really? I don't think it's going to get any worse. No, that makes well, a difference? I, can, I agree with Terry. I don't see what, what it would do if we're going to tear it out next spring. Mm -hmm. We paid for that road once. And they're asking for us to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't put any cost to it either. Yeah, I, you know, I guess I would tell you that routing and sealing would be the minimum fix that we would expect. You know, and, and that would be a, a common fix then also. So if there's certain types of cracking that that uh, you know they would they would just route it out and seal it because water is the uh, is the enemy of pavement and you want to do what you can to keep water out. But if we agree to do that, aren't we agreeing with them that okay, it's it's not something that they necessarily did because we're agreeing to go along with the sealing. I don't know. I, I guess I'd defer um, to the. Whatever. If we if we do it, are we agreeing to pay them? Yeah. No. It, I think we're just agreeing to have it done. And we have some duty to attempt to mitigate. I don't think we can tell them not to do it, but I'm not telling them we're going to pay for it. So the way it was left, I was supposed to contact their attorney and see where we were at, which I haven't gotten around to doing that. We just got the report but last week. I, think. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure that it's not implied just because we agree with it having that done, that all of a sudden we're agreeing to something else in their eyes besides, and we're not. But, but they want us to pay for it, right, Dave? They want us to pay for the crack ceiling, right? They said they would do it and turn it in as a claim, just like they're turning in the replacement of the panels <coughs> as a claim. 
but they, they, they didn't list price either. No. You can claim what you want. <laughs> is, it a, is it a claim of bill? Yeah. Undecided whether we would pay it though, Bill. That, that it's, uh, you know, they make claim, but then there's a process to determine who's paying it. So you would tell them to do it, Dave, but it's at their cost? Yeah, I think so. But then they, they might not do it, cost. right? Or they accept no uh, responsibility? They, they actually were the ones that brought up they'd like to come in and route and caucus, you know what they call it, to Mit mitigate any further expansion to the extent that they can. It might save some other so, panels from cracking over the winter if they seal it. Well, they're, they're just talking about sealing the cracks with Yeah, gas. they're only going right. to seal the cracks. So, yeah. so, so if they... So, you know, like what, what Terry said, I don't see why we're going to seal a crack the cracks might get a little big, bigger, but we're still going to replace that panel. But then they're also, um, they're going to have to repack it and stuff anyway before they pour new cement. So what, I don't understand that either. Everyone seems to agree to that, that, yeah. that uh, the subgrade's got to be opened up and replaced. So, it, it's got, remember we were up there and they said, when you have a crack that isn't lined up with another crack, that just leads it into the next panel to keep on cracking. Right, sure. Well, I can't see where them sealing these cracks are going to keep the crack from continuing no. on. It'll keep the water out of that existing panel. True. Yep. I don't think it's going to stop it from going on. Well, they didn't do the road right. Maybe they can't tar and do it either. Right. So, yeah. I'm not going to stop them from doing what they can to yeah. mitigate the damages. We're just not going to pay. So right. you right. would just put it that you can do what you want, but yeah. we're not we're not agreeing to pay them. Right, we can't prevent them from trying to save what they can, mm -hmm. which is kind of what they're, a little bit of what they're doing. Okay. And then we need to get to the bottom of uh, the specification for evenly distributing the subgrade, which there's a, there's a reference to some uh, pseudos in there that talk about that, but it's not very specific. So we're probably going to need someone that's actually uh, prepare this upgrade before to look at uh, what the specs say versus what was done. And then it's our position that it's the contractor's means and method. So if it's not spec, then the contractor is supposed to use the usual customary means and method that he has in his experience because the contract requires him to be experienced and knowledgeable in doing this type of project. So that's where our engineers are coming back and saying, we wouldn't have to spec anything because everybody knows if you're going to have uh, loamy clay, you have to spread it evenly so that it expands and contracts equally. And then well, there's also a sub issue in there too about the geometric saw cutting, which I haven't even looked at that yet, but that can affect it too. If they well, have to saw cuts the right space and distances. And depth. And depth. Uh, yeah. Did they come up and resolve them like they were going to? The cracks? Yeah, remember up there today they said they oh, came up and I, I couldn't answer that, John. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they've been here. I haven't time. seen them. I've never seen anybody. We've not heard from anybody. I, no. I'd be surprised. I haven't seen them. I think we would have heard it, too. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they were exactly thrilled with this report. You know, that's Well, if they were cutting up the view of the saw, Dave, they were well, out, hey, you guys are right there for Dave. Yeah, I don't think well, I never heard that. We're only a couple of blocks yeah. away. Mm -hmm. Everybody can hear that. So it's in your court. And, and I think I'll be talking to Scott again, but uh, I'll make contact with their attorney and then probably will want to go into closed session because I want to be able to discuss what I'm finding out about our litigation experience that we're going to have as far as engineer versus design versus concrete versus contractor. There's a lot of different areas that, that can point to the same problem. Mm -hmm. we're, kind of, we're kind of asking the fox to eat the chickens. <laughs> <laughs>
when we're talking about it. <laughs> so <laughs> might need a little yeah, exactly. another perspective on it. Mm -hmm. We're doing an online concrete class. <laughs> there you go, here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I have another thing that is just only slightly related to concrete. <laughs> but this is related to Hancock concrete. They, they called up here and, and asked us a sanitary sewer question. So Hancock uses steam curing to cure a lot of their pipe and their big box culverts. And so when they use the steam cure and then it condenses, it of course becomes liquid again. And right now it just flows out onto the ground. And they're doing an environmental audit. And then, so the question arose, can they put this, this steam condensate into the city sanitary sewer system? Okay, so that's issue number one is steam condensate. The, and issue number two was that they use a core saw there regularly. And then as they're using this core saw, of course, it's, it's uh, using water all the time as you're sawing. So you have all of that water also then that they were asking whether they could uh, put this into the sanitary sewer. So contacted uh, Bob Veenstra about that. And just on the steam condensate, just had no concerns about that. You know, that that would, you know, it will just be basically water, no concerns about about accepting that into the sanitary sewer system, um, and about the the water from the from the core hole cuts, um, also did not have concerns about this. You know there is no chemical reaction or anything like that that's going to tro throw off our sewer treatment. So he, he didn't have concerns about that, but in the in that little slurry that comes out of these core hole cuts, there is of course then lots of small particles of concrete and stuff. And you keep flushing that down the sewer, eventually some of that stuff can settle out, it'll make a little slurry which on the bottom which could conceivably uh, at some time harden. So this that is a little concern, but he said, so if you want to do that, um, we would certainly encourage uh, Hancock to have a settling basin to settle that water out before that water would be pumped into the sanitary. So I guess I, I just relay this to you because the end result is that uh, we wouldn't have any you know, engineering concerns about accepting that and we would like to work with Hancock. But you're going to recommend that they have this settling, settling basin on the, on the core pole. Or we're going to require it. Well, I would think they'd have to because otherwise that cement couldn't it cause could problems. Can we also have that on the other one too, Scott? I'll have the settling basin on both of them? Just in case? I uh, can. If, uh, I, I guess they would have to I see technically to or, uh, how on that could work. But um, on the condensate one, he didn't it didn't have, there would be no particles in it. You know, seem, didn't seem nearly as concerning. But uh, I guess I would intend to talk with Hancock and, and we'll try to work with them as best we can, but we would have the settling basin and, and they would likely then have to pump out of that into the center. Will he put those recommendations in writing so that we have documentation that's what he's recommending? Or the requirement. I think we yeah. need to require it. Yeah. I guess it was just a, uh, you know, just a phone I, call when I was talking with him, so I, I, I didn't know, ask him for anything. But Just so we're, we stay on the same page as what we're but, doing with Hancock and everywhere. But I don't think we need to have Beans to do it. He'll no, charge us for it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. sure we don't have to right. do I mean, we've already got his opinion. Can't you draft something? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Then we'll pay you for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take up right the collection. I, I just think yeah. that, that what is being recommended should be put in writing. Sure. Okay. Right. And that's what we're we're letting Hancock know. Right. Mm -hmm. Can we have that drawing also be in that too, Scott? The drawing of the, the proposed basin. Yeah. What and we're proposing. Um, we kind of rely on on Hancock at least to start with about what it is that they would propose. Yeah, just give never... us a drawing and show us what yeah. they're right. proposing. Yeah. But their engineers design it, not ours. Oh yeah. yeah. They've got engineers. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just, just for my 
my sense of uh, curiosity, I might call Julie Severs too at the DNR and make sure true. we're not tripping over something. Or maybe you've already done that. I, I, and I have not. Okay. Now, uh, Julie is the water person, so it'd be Sheila Kenny who does the, okay. the sewer. Um, but I, I specifically asked uh, Bob Deanster about that. Do we need to consult with DNR on anything? He said no. Okay. Um, I guess my next thing just was an update on the Raritan cleanup, and maybe I'll let the mayor speak to the update of the Raritan cleanup. I, I talked to him tonight. They talked like it might be done the end of this week. That's, that's the way it's going there. I think the last I talked to him, they had three semi loads of tires and rims that went to Des Moines. It cost a hundred bucks a ton to get rid of them. Yeah. It's the cheapest we could come up with. We did have to haul in seven, eight loads of white rock, so they put a road down the middle of, of the junkyard so we could get in there. And then they're, uh, <clears throat> towards the end, we're going to take some of those trees down, but I, we've had some discussion back and forth that uh, I think the park yeah, sell better. better bigger trees got taken out. Good we're supposed to take those that are six inches and smaller, but some of the bigger trees have uh, steel wheels coming out and yeah. off the ground. So. It's sell better and these guys can do it, but I'm sure we're, whatever the court order was, we can or cannot do some of that. Can we talk to Mike? I think it's got it garbage is. I'm real sure we didn't cover trees with steel rims yeah. in them. I know we ever yeah. talked no, about that. No, the, there's three trees down there, and one of them has a cable coming out that grew in there 30 years ago. But if it, you know, that, that them ought to come out anyway. So I, I, I got to tell about the fans, but it hurts other people. Yeah. Yeah, I guess just know that John and I have gone around about this, that John really feels we ought to remove as, as much trees down there as possible. You know, and my response to, to the mayor has been that, you know, this is a nuisance abatement action and we're abating a nuisance. But you if know, they've so, got so how far does that cables go? coming out of them, they just would be a nuisance, wouldn't they? You cut the cable off. Yeah. So we, I guess my point is that, you know, if you if you want to remove uh, more trees out there, you know, and we can continue to push it through the project like we would, just understand that at some point, you know, if they if Raritans or whomever really bucket this, that it may end up being a city issue, city cost. So we need a well, not that many trees. We need an opinion from Dave or what? So, can we run by their attorneys and say, hey, these, these guys are here. It'll sell better, I think. Everybody I talk to says it'll sell better if the trees are gone inside. But if them, that stuff's in them trees and the city ends up having to take them out, then yeah, what's they, that going to do to blade? <coughs> we got iron and cable and all that. I mean, sure. yeah. this, this guy says he can take the big trees down in about 45 seconds. Well, I know. I, I mean, he with a big With a big backbone. Because he's going to eat up the trees that they do take down with the shredder. They're going to go out in the semi and chips. <laughs> That's how they're going to go out. And there isn't like there's a hundred trees that are big. There's a dozen big trees that are probably need to go. The rest are the smaller trees. They're breaking off up on top or something. Yeah, they're. Uh, there's I just think we do the rivers <laughs> a favor. It's going to sell for more. Yeah. Just ask them. <laughs> uh, trees normally aren't nuisances. No, no. Yeah. But there'd be a benefit to the, to the same branches that fall. They're, they're doing a beautiful job down yeah, there. They are. Yeah. They, I've drove by there. It looks yeah. like they got a ways to go yet, too, though, yeah, considering well, how long. Yeah, but I mean, from what they started, yeah, it's been yeah. so wet. It's just. I know. So, what do you think, Dave? I'll talk to their lawyers and see what they want to do. I'd like to get. I'd like to know where we're at on the cost, too, yeah. if we yeah. can ever get some kind of handle on that. I, I have not received any updated cost. Yeah. Well, let's just get an estimate. Yeah, you could surely ask them. You know, we're thinking about taking out. We're checking to see if we can take out more trees. And how much is our bill right now? And what's going to cost to add, add that on? An estimate. Well, I made inquiry about the buildings too because someone suggested it'd be nice to take those down. Long as we had means and methods to do that, and. Uh, one lawyer said he would check with his client, the other lawyer didn't even answer me back, so. <laughs> no, I know, I, that's what I said. We all know what we would do if it was our property, but it's not our property. We're just maintaining the public health and the safety and 
Scott, where that sewer goes through, is there an easement through there to where you can do the clearing of the trees? Like our power yeah, lines? We, uh, if, if there's an easement, a, a documented easement, I don't know where it's at. Yeah. As far as I can tell, it's... You know, practically speaking, we have an, an easement because it's been there since the 1930s. But Are there power lines in there? No, I said... Like we have the right to trim our trees, you know, yeah. around our utility. I was wondering if it was the same for the sewer line that goes through there. That's that's what I meant, Dave. You know, so you have access to your sewer line. Well, it also keeps ruts out too. But that's right. right. I'm I'm reaching. And yeah, you say <laughs> I don't want to go too far to claim an ownership of trees by sewers because we get that issue all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, unless we hear different, we'll just take out the smaller trees and let it go with that. Well, it could be suggested that, you know, the, the trees plus the other buildings would maybe, especially the buildings, I mean, couldn't that be, a, they're not in very good shape. That could be another nuisance issue that they might, you know, I mean, wouldn't that maybe... The way we framed these pleadings is that we didn't want to get inside the buildings. Uh, because then you get into structure and all that stuff. And primarily, we're just, as a city, uh, making sure that we get the toxic stuff out of there, the tires and all that good stuff. And Quit while we're ahead, so yeah, what you're saying. I'll talk to Mike Green, too, and see what he says, because he's the quarter-pointed receiver, and he could, he could probably go back and get another court order if we want one. But Let's just keep an eye on the costs here. Before well, I was just saying that, you know, that if it was put to them like that, you know, if we take care of this now, it could be an issue, you know, and if we don't, it could be an issue down the road, not necessarily saying it is. And Kim Reardon's been down there, I've talked to him a couple times, he thought the tree should go over here. But he doesn't own it. No, he doesn't. He's one of them. One of the, how many are there? Five, six of them? Yeah, it depends on how you count them. Yeah, I, <laughs> We'll, we'll just do what we're supposed to do unless we find something else different. But they're making good headway. They're daylight to dark. My last thing is, a, is about um, meeting with the school board. We'll meet with the school board next week. And I gave you a, a proposal of, um, I guess this, I, I would propose that it's just, we just give them a letter. That we would have a have a letter that uh, that the uh, city council would present. So we'd go basically read the letter to them. You read the what is that first paragraph, and then after every paragraph, there's some highlighted talking points. So this is like a two-person tag team presentation of the letter to them. I would like everybody to to read that and give some serious thought to that and have some. In, some recommended improvements for what you'd like to include in that. I, know, I read it and I, I, I like the way it's written. Mm -hmm. Especially I'm looking for some more talking points that we just be able to talk to those. You don't have to write those out. But we're just talking uh, points of emphasis or, or good examples. Sometimes that means it's used to and we still don't know what time we would be presenting because it'll either occur during that work session or during the board meeting which follows the work session. And uh, when I talked with John Kraft last, it, it had not been decided yet when that was. So. It's, not, it's not on their regular agenda, so I'm assuming it's in their work session. Okay. Which would be 6 o'clock then on the work session, right? Uh, yeah. Unless it's part of the discuss and or approve facility planning. That's in there. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty broad. Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean they've made up their minds already? No. That's been on their agenda that way for a year and a half. No, I think. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Motion to adjourn. I like it. Second. Vicky. Awesome. Oh, oh. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.
They don't last very long. Now when you don't turn them on, they last very long. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't use battery at all. Right. No. Well, not very good battery.